All right, algebra students, let's look at unit four, lesson two, function notation. We have three goals here. If you need to, pause the video to get them all down. So number one, I can use function notation to express functions that have specific inputs and outputs. So the idea behind this is each one will have its specific inputs and outputs, and we can show those using this new notation we're going to learn. I understand what function notation is and why it exists. So with this new notation, we're going to look at exactly what it means to us and how we can use it. Number three, when given a statement written in function notation, I can explain what it means in terms of the situation. So the idea is when we look at something in function okay, notation, can we pick out the input and the output and how we would use that to describe a situation? So our vocabulary here stays basically the same. We have dependent variable, which is our outputs from the situation, a function, which is a relationship that takes one input to exactly one output, independent variable, which is the input of the problem, and then our new one is function notation, a method for writing functions you have named. So what we're going to do is we're going to give the function a name, such as in this case we named a function f, which has an input of x, and uses f of x to denote the corresponding output. So what we do is we use the name and the input to create a new version of the output instead of using the letter y. And I'll explain why we do that during class. All right, so here's our warm up. So if you go online and look at the online book, there will be three of these graphs. All I want you to do is focus on day one and answer these four questions for day one. So here's what the graph basically looks like. Just do your best to estimate the answers to these and we'll talk about them tomorrow. So how far was the dog from the post at 60 seconds? So find 60 seconds and estimate about how far from the post the dog was. How far was the dog from the post when his owner left? So when his owner left, this is how much time in seconds the owner has been away. So when he left, it had to be where. How far from the post was the dog when the owner came back? That's 160 seconds later. And lastly, how many seconds had passed when the dog was farthest from the post? All right, answer those four questions using this graph and then bring that to class tomorrow, and that'll start our discussion. Thanks.